Yo, what's up? Today, I will talk about center mode. So there are mainly two things I will talk about. The first one is how much energy or how much extra power does it consume while running? I've done some tests now. We, uh, also, after it started recording with four cameras versus three cameras. And the second thing is, is it worth running center mode? Because it sucks extra energy, it sucks extra electricity. Is it worth running it? versus catching someone who dents your car. So I will come back to that in this video. So now let's talk about the consumption first. Powell, my good friend, he measured 71.4% at start. And then 84 hours later, after running sentry mode, it was down to 49% in the app. But if you look in the app and you go to the charge screen, and you push the slider to 100%, it says 98. So that tells me that the battery is slightly colder than it should be. So the real state of charge should be 50% according to this. Uh, so it means that I lost 21% after 84 hours of running sentry mode. And that equals to 174 watts. That's what the car spent. But uh, Powell did move the car during that test. So it, it kind of screws up the test a little bit. 10 meters or something to a different spot. So, okay, maybe best case is 170 watts only, but let's assume 174 then. Okay, worst case. Um, and I've done some measurements in the past, by the way. And um, you see that in April last year, um, it was 315 watts. That's pretty high, but I only did it overnight and I didn't use scan my Tesla. So um, the, the state of charge, the range measurement might be actually off there. Second test was in May, it was 233 watts. And then the third test was in August, um, 156 watts. That's the lowest one I measured. So that's pretty good uh, result. Um, and then this time was 174. And why was it higher now? Was it because it started recording with one extra camera? Uh, I don't think so. It, I, it seems like, uh, based on my test now, that um, because after this one, after I measure this uh, test, I also looked at the consumption afterward, but I was more active on the app. And it seems that the consumption goes up now. So I suspect that every time I check the app, the car wakes up. The car might be semi-sleeping while it's still running sentry mode or something. So yeah, I'm not sure how relevant this one is, but let's just assume that the last test then as, um, as a base for the calculation. So um, there's one thing we have to subtract, which is the vampire drain. So Tesla, when it's just parked there without doing anything with center mode off, the battery will drain itself a little bit because it tends to keep some stuff running. That's just how Teslas work. Um, and I measure it to be as low as 14 watts. So some people might disagree and say that, oh, but you should count higher uh, because it's not going into deep sleep. But if you assume that one, then worst case again, uh, then Sentry mode sucks 160 watts extra. And then Sentry mode runs on the 12 volt system in the car. And the 12 volt system is charged by the high voltage battery via a DC DC charger. And then that car, and then the high voltage battery is again charged from uh, the AC DC charger from outside, right? So there is actually two times loss there. And I assume 20% uh, loss. Maybe it's too high, maybe it should only be 15, but okay. And that means that um, worst case now is sentry mode run, uh, sucks another 200 watts just to keep it running. Some people might disagree and say that it's, worth, it's 100 watts, but okay, let's assume 200 watts, see what happens now. If you have to park um, with sentry mode uh, in, uh, let's say this is the best case then, how many, how many hours or how much energy do you spend per year? Uh, if you park at work for um, nine hours, you work eight hours and there's a little bit of overhead. So nine hours per day, you park at work with Sentiment on and you only work 230 days per year. Yeah, the rest is holiday and weekend. Yeah? And that uh, equals to uh, 2000, a little over 2000 hours per year. And then you multiply by the power you need and it becomes 414 uh, kilowatt hour per year. This is the best case. Worst case is you have to run it all the time. But first we have to subtract the time you need, I mean the time when you're driving. So if you drive 20,000 kilometers per year, then that is simply time you cannot run a center mode. And if you divide it by 70 kilometers per hour, then that equals to 286 hours where you can simply not run center mode. And then for the rest of the hours, you run center mode and it means 8,200 something uh, hours per year. And uh, that would be 1,600 
kilowatt hour per year. So it's four times higher than the, the best case. So now we have two cases of how much you run sentry mode. And then let's, let's look at cost of repair. So my good friend Powell, um, someone did a hit and run. Yeah, he, some guy with a forklift ran into his car. He was using his phone, by the way. And it cost him, well, it didn't cost him, but the, the repair for the bumper was uh, 1,100 euros. And then Powell also has a PPF, a pain protection film, which costs even more, but um, uh, we, we don't count that because uh, most people don't have PPF. And then as for me, someone also damaged my car when it was parked. And fortunately I had center mode running. But my repair, I got a very special price, only 500 euros. You have to expect that that repair must have been over 1,000 euros. So we can expect that typical repairs will cost between 1,000 and 2,000 euros. I think that's actually fair for a Tesla or another EV, I guess. Uh, and then how does this correspond with the electricity needed? Okay, so what we can do now is we can look at how much we need uh, to pay per uh, year. In Norway, the electricity is fairly cheap, so it only translates to 41 euros per year. Uh, but in Germany, it's going to be 114 euros per year. This is the best case when you only park at work. And then if you um, have an expensive uh, repair, it will take you 49 years. Yeah. It would take 49 years before the cost of electricity in Norway is higher than the cost of a damage you have if you didn't have a sentry mode on and you had to pay it out of your pocket. Yeah, I don't know if you get that one, but okay, let's take the, another example here then. Expensive repair in Germany uh, will take you 18 years before it's more expensive than the repair cost. Yeah. Uh, and then if you assume uh, uh, the cheap repair then 1000 euros only then it will take 40, uh, it will take 24 years in Norway and then it will take 9 years in Germany so basically um, for a more uh, the, the most typical scenario where you only park in an unsafe environment um, half of the time something like that you know then um, it will actually pay off to run sentry mode even in Germany but, uh, well, okay, one thing I haven't mentioned, but maybe in, in Poland, you can get the repair done cheaper. So maybe in Poland, it doesn't pay off. Or maybe in Poland, the, the probability of someone dinging your car is higher in Russia. So I really, I can't give you the answer. You have to know the answer uh, based on your country. But let's look at the worst case then, if you have to run it all the time, then it's going to be somewhat expensive in Norway, 165 euros per year. And then in Germany, it will be uh, almost 500 euros per year. That's actually quite a lot of uh, money, yeah. Uh, and then if you have a an expensive damage, um, it will be 12 years before it's more expensive in Norway and then only four years in Germany. And then if you have just a uh, cheap damage, then only after six years or in Norway and then <laughs> two years in Germany. So lots of numbers here, but you see the worst case here is that if you have inexpensive repair and if you have to run it all the time, like you probably would in, uh, in let's say Poland. Okay, now someone's gonna hate me. Oh, Poland's not that bad. Poland's not even Eastern Europe. Yeah. But I'm just giving, giving some, some, some examples here. Then for some cases, it's not worth running it. But I think for most cases, it's worth running it, even if you have to, yeah, spend a little bit of extra energy. Uh, but there's a few things I haven't talked about, which is that um, many places you can uh, get electricity for free, maybe at work, at the shopping mall, or if you park maybe outside your home and you have public charging for free, it's just slow, but it's free. And also uh, at airports, you might be able to plug in while you're on vacation, and then you should definitely run sentry mode, of course. Um, and also the repairs are very expensive in Norway. So again, uh, I don't know how high the expense, uh, the, the repairs are in your country. So it, it might not be that bad or it might be actually that bad, depends, yeah. Uh, but also um, every time that we have a repair like me and Pavel, we had to drive to the body shop and do some repairs and then get a loaner or take the bus home like I did. That's a waste of time. Time is money. I was never compensated for that lost time. Same with Powell. So you also have to take into account that one, of course. Um, um, but also, um, you could also, instead of using sentry mode, get a dash cam, 360 camera or something, but you have to get 
at least four cameras to get the same coverage as Tesla. And then that system will most likely draw way less power than Tesla, maybe just 10, 20 watts or something, worst case. Uh, but you also have to invest money into that system, of course. The thing is that uh, Tesla Sentry Mode is free. It's standard on all the new cars. You don't have to pay extra for it. All the, all, the only thing you have to do is buy a USB stick, uh, but it, they are not that expensive, maybe 20 euros for one or something. Um, so that's good, right? But um, the thing about Sentry Mode is that it will potentially scare off people because there's a warning, the car flashes, they see like, oh, whoa, this, this car is alive. So just the fact that you can scare off someone from damaging your car is actually priceless. Because once the damage is done, then you have to waste time doing some detective work to find out who did this. And you have to eventually get the, the repair done. And this, again, I mentioned, you know, no one compensated me for all the lost time I had to do here. Yeah. Um, so, you know, to conclude this, uh, is it worth it? Maybe, but I hope, actually, yeah, okay, to conclude it, I would say that for most people it's worth it, but if you're not sure, then you should calculate. But I hope Tesla can try to improve the consumption of Sentry Mode. Now, the, the problem why it's, it's sucking that much power is because Tesla, when they design the car, they never design it for Sentry Mode. Sentry Mode was an extra option. They, they just had an idea that, hey, how we can do this one. So basically the car is running off one of the main computers to to keep the whole thing active, right? Whereas um, uh, if they design it from ground up, they could have their own processor, their own little micro machine to monitor this, it sucks way less power, do the whole image recognizing uh, to detect if someone is getting close or something, and then it would be better. But Tesla never designed this from ground up. That's why it's so thirsty, yeah. But it would be great if they could at least improve it. But there's one extra thing I would like to see. Uh, I'm not sure if it's possible to do it, maybe. Uh, they should implement a paranoid mode, which is, there should be some warnings and stuff when, before you enable it, but um, paranoid mode would be that every time a sentry mode is activated in the car, then I should get some kind of notification, and then, whoa. And then I just check, um, and then I want to see uh, screenshots, maybe not video because that's too heavy, but screenshot of the four cameras, and I can just slide and see what's going on right now. Yeah, uh, maybe it will update once every minute or something, you know? It will put some extra load on Tesla servers, of course, but it would be so cool feature. And actually, if that happens, I could see that, oh, somebody's trying to break into my car, or, no, it's just a cat. Okay, no worries. It's something like that. It would be so cool to have that feature. What do you guys think, huh? <laughs> I don't know if it will ever, ever pass the, the GDPR and all that, but okay, whatever, whatever. It's just a cool idea I had. So anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.